Okay, I know it's not Skynet, but you gotta start somewhere. This is the Easy Bot Arm from Thingiverse by Carlo Francisco. This was a featured item a while back on the site, and I always wanted to build one. This is not the most robust configuration, but it's a great starter in Arduino, 3D printing, and robotics. It's easy to print, cheap to assemble, and very satisfying to watch work. The link to the Thingiverse page is in the description below. So let's get into the build. Here are all the 3D printed parts you will need to build it. I printed all these in PLA on various printers. Note the different colors don't matter here. You'll need only one of each part, except you'll need three links and two servo holders. You will need five servos if you want to use the slide as well. I used four MG90S servos with metal gears and one MG90 plastic gear servo for the pinchers. You might want to get a couple of extras. They are easy to fail and they cost only around $1.70 US on AliExpress. I am using an Arduino Uno to control this one with some very simple code I will link to in the description. A servo controller does make things much easier for this build. I did try this first, but I cheaped out and bought a Palulu clone board and it failed within the first hour of testing. Lesson learned. 15 bucks in the toilet. So Arduino it is. You will also need a 5 volt power supply of some kind to power the servos. I'm using an ATX power supply I had lying around. I powered the Arduino straight from my PC over the USB port. You could use a 9 volt as well. I used 4mm by 20mm pan head screws to link all the joints. They should all clear, but you might need to file down a couple of the heads depending on what screws you use. The flatter the head, the better. There is one wrist pin joint that could use a 25mm. 20 is a little short, but it'll do. You need 7 M3 10mm, 1 M3 30mm, and 1 M3 15mm cap head screw. You will also need a little longer 2.5mm screw to link the base top to the base servo. The stock servo screw is a little short. You will also need all the corresponding nuts, washers, and servo hardware to go with it. There is a parts list on the Thingiverse page. This build also calls for some 4mm brass pipe as a bushing. It can be very hard to find. You will need to get creative with this one. I found some pin type wire connectors that were exactly the right size. I cut the insulation off of these and slid one in each side. They work perfect. I recommend you clean all the screw holes out with a deburring tool before assembly. The screws need to fit snug in the holes but spinning easily. You don't want any kind of added friction. Before you put the screws in for the final time, give them a few drops of PTFE lube for good measure. No need to snug these bolts up either. Use locking nuts but leave both sides loose. They're not going anywhere. First take two of the straight links and the triangle link piece and bolt them together. Make sure the orientation of the triangle link is correct. It will work both ways, but if you get it backwards, the arm won't have full movement. Then take the horizontal arm, the vertical arm, and the last straight link and put them together. Use three washers to separate the vertical arm and the link at the bottom. Load the servo into the base. Watch the wires. Make sure not to pinch them. Press some 3mm nuts into the lid. The base servo arm will need a little longer 2.5mm screw to attach it. About a 7mm screw is needed. Now attach the bottom of the arm to the lid with three M3 by 10 millimeter cap screws. Put the pinchers together as you see in the instructable. It takes a three millimeter by 10 millimeter cap screw and a three millimeter by 15 millimeter cap screw. The pinchers do fit on the servo, but they need to set a little higher than the base of the arm. I added a five millimeter washer to raise it up and it works smoothly. You also need to cut some off of the servo arm to get it to fit. Now mount the pinchers to the arm. You can get by with the same 20mm length M4 screw, but it will be a little short. A 25mm would work better. Now put the main arm assembly onto the base with your tube or bushing of choice and connect the last straight link. Now connect the elbow and wrist servos using the servo mounts and some M3 10mm screws. Try to set the servos to the 90 degree position roughly before you place them on the arm. This will give you some leeway when setting things up in the code. You will have to trim both plastic servo arms to get them to fit snugly. Now let's get to wiring. This is very much a test setup, but it works. You want to keep things as organized as possible. I like to divide my breadboard up into sections so I know which servo is wired where. First set up a 5 volt power rail and a ground rail from the power supply. I like to add an LED to show when it's being powered. 
Next, cable all your power and ground connections for your servos to the rail. On the servo, brown is ground and red is positive. Now divide up all your servo signal wires on your board. Again, spacing them out so you can see what's going on. I like to do the base as servo one, the elbow as servo two, the wrist as servo three, the pinchers as servo four, and the gate for the ball as servo five. Now cable the signal line to the Arduino. I'm using an Arduino Uno in this case. I like to use port eight through 12. Eight for my base, nine for my elbow, 10 for my wrist, 11 for my pincher, and 12 for the gate for the ball. Also add a ground line from the Arduino to the ground rail. This helps with the servo stutter issues. Now you can plug your board into your PC to get it powered up. Now let's get some code on the board. This is some very simple code. I'm just calling out servo locations based on where I have the arm and the slide placed. You'll have to play with these values to fit your setup. This also gets determined by where the servo is when you attach the arm to the servo. I recommend setting up some code to set the servos to 90 before you attach the arm to get a good average value to start with. Carla has provided files for this slide and a ball so the arm has a job to do. You need to get your arm code roughed in and then decide where your slide needs to be placed. The end of the arm does have a V to line up the bottom part of the slide. This helps guide where the arm needs to land to pick up the ball. Carla created a ball to use, but I found it to be too light, so I went with some 10 millimeter ball bearings. The problem with the bearings was they were too slick for the plastic arms to pick up. So I added some adhesive backed 120 grit sandpaper to the face of the fingers and it works great. This has been one of the most entertaining 3D printer based builds that I've ever done. This arm could have all kinds of uses. There is an MK2 version available that I might check out later. Please consider checking out all of Carlo's things on Thingiverse and hitting the like button. Nicely done, Carlo. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting the thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, leave your thoughts below, and as always, thanks for watching.